Good evening, sitting in for Indira Craig. I am Jo Marie Lanza. Clay Monsato murdered will tell you why the 51 year old street style execution could ramp up street rivalries, even during a state of emergency. And a teenager and man drown while in a swimming race. Plus, seven Cubans rescued at sea by a cruise ship and left in Belize. But what will the Department of Immigration do with them? Also, we'll have a full recap of the Holy Saturday Cross Country Cycling Classic and tell you why it was historic, even if it ended in heartbreak. These stories and more ahead on 7 News, so please stay tuned. Babe, I'm going out to pay the water bill. You don't need to go out. You could pay it from your phone. Look. Babe, the credit card bill. I'll go pay it. You can also pay it with your phone. Babe? Yes, love? I need to go deposit the babysitter's pay. You really want to go out, don't you? It's okay. I will make the transfer and you go play ball. With Atlantic Bank Mobile, your personal banking experience is easier and more convenient. Bank your way with any of our digital channels and save time for what matters most. Atlantic Bank. Building the future together. In his budget rebuttal, opposition leader Honorable Shine Barrow condemned this PUP government for its philosophy of keeping the people poor and desperate so their support could be bought at election time. There are some politicians that want to keep the people of Belize illiterate, uneducated, unskilled, dependent, and desperate. This drip feed philosophy that keeps the population dependent on government, successive governments, they never get anywhere. So when election time comes, they could come with the money from foreign governments, they could come with the BTB $50 million bond, and they could come with all of the public's coffers. They put the public in a position where they are impoverished, where they are desperate, and give them what belongs to them and what belongs to them madam speaker we have to change that if you change the system then you will put your people you will empower your people and people will not have to vote for the treats that some of you come around with on election time they will vote based on policy they will vote based on long-term benefits for our entire society indeed the people and country of belize deserve Better. With RFNG Insurance, you can request a quote, renew a policy, purchase a policy, and even file a claim effortlessly with WhatsApp. Here's how. WhatsApp the words, get started, to 670-8700. We will prompt you to select the service that you are interested in. 
select the service and answer a few simple questions. An RFNG representative will process your request and follow up with you when your transaction is completed. It's that easy. Skip lines and WhatsApp us. Remember, it pays to get it right with RFNG Insurance, a road you come. Means aren't We're navigating plane. along the coast. This morning, the 2023. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Sheree Kalsil, and here's what's ahead for you on Southern News tonight. We've got details of these and other stories in our newscast for tonight. Good evening. With your news, I'm in your craft. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel 7. Nando's Wholesale is the distributor for the full line of Badia spices, including the original complete seasoning, the perfect combination of ingredients and spices prepared to enhance the natural flavor of your favorite foods. Also, cinnamon powder for all your desserts, fruits and beverages, and as special dishes. All these are available in commercial sizes or restaurant packaging. Nando's products are available at your local retailer or contact us at 222-5000. From Corzal to Toledo, Nando's is proud to be serving Belize as its number one wholesale distributor for over 35 years. If you're tired of the beer in your house with daily Coco Wawa fan and finally realize that the time to get yourself a good, durable, reliable fan, contact Maya's panel website or social media. Maya's going to hook you up with one of their 18-inch heavy-duty tripod fan where might could even change your life as it keep you cool in this hot Belizean weather. Yes, man, because their 18-inch heavy-duty tripod fan from Maya's not just could blow your lip back way, they might could blow away your mind if you say blow away their toxic konomono out of your life and the bad vibes out of your house. Order your 18-inch heavy-duty tripod fan from Maya's website or on their social media and Maya's going to ship out your fan anywhere countrywide ASAP. Not believe me? Visit MyasElectronics.bz right now for order your fun today. Thirteen million eight hundred thirty-five thousand seven hundred eggs are eaten by tourists each year, fueling our thriving economy. Tourism means business. Atla Express es un servicio que te permite realizar transacciones financieras cómodamente en comercios cerca de ti. Con Atla Express puedes retirar efectivo, realizar pagos de facturas y tarjeta de crédito, comprar recargas y transferir entre tus cuentas. Solo necesitas una identificación válida y tu tarjeta de débito visa de Atlantic Bank. Si no eres cliente de Atlantic Bank, Siempre puedes disfrutar de este servicio pagando en efectivo. Atla Express es fácil, conveniente, seguro y está cerca de ti. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. Tonight, police are on high alert after a prominent former gang figure was viciously executed over the Easter weekend. Clay Monsanto was a prominent gun figure back in the late 90s until he migrated to the U.S. where his mother had been living since he was a child. But seven months ago, 51-year-old Clay Monsanto was deported. And on Friday evening, he was executed in his yard. According to his family, Monsanto had not been involved in any gang activity since he came back, 
But the younger rival gang members did not take the chance that he would return to his old ways. The gunman let off almost two dozen bullets, ensuring Monsanto's demise. So while most Belizeans were taking a break over the long holiday weekend, Monsanto's family has been trying to make sense of such a vicious murder. While they acknowledge his past, they say he had truly changed his life. His brother, Raymond Futegongora, said that they're not planning to fight fire with fire. He just wants to grieve the brother he raised like a son. Courtney Menzies spoke with him today and he has this story. 51-year-old Clay Uter, known as Monsanto, left Belize about two decades ago to escape his past. Seven months ago, he was deported, but this time around, he made major changes to his life. But despite turning over a new leaf, Monsanto was ambushed at his own home. On Friday at about four in the afternoon, a motorcycle pulled up in front of his house, and a gunman in slippers hopped off, tried to open the gate, and when he couldn't, he jumped over it and dashed across the yard, where you can hear him let off as many as 20 rounds. Monsanto tried to run, but ultimately collapsed and died in his neighbor's yard, the echo of the gunshots shattering the quiet of Good Friday in the Gungalung. It was maximum use of firepower. The gunman took no chance. His brother, Raymond Gungara, who works with the LIU in keeping the peace between gang members on the Belize City streets, said that he was in a state of shock. But he emphasized that while his brother was involved in criminal activities before, he was back in Belize to live a new life. It's a feeling I don't even want to remember, man, because it was a real shocker. Me and my brother talk like every night, every night. And every time in the day, you get a chance, we go over and see him and we sit down and we talk. Because he had, he had migrated to the States 20 some years ago. And now he's back because of deportation, but he didn't come back with um, the intention to be back in the gang or, 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 or do anything when it comes to gangs or you know, he came back to try. He have a lot of kids and he came back and I said, Clay, you have to try to know your kids, your grandkids and start to, you know, live with them and, you know, show them love. But that feeling, it just sink you, it make you, it make you feel like you can't move on. And while this family mourns, they aren't seeking any sort of retaliation. However, both his brother and his sister, who raised him from when he was about eight years old, explained that they warned Monsanto about the danger his life might have been in. So when he first come and attack no, I said, brother, what are your intention? So I stay a little bit and think, I said, well, then just be careful because remember, you have a past and you don't know who the who, or who child or who child, where you gone from here, yeah, had a problem with both. You got to be careful. I don't know what that reason why they kill her. If that because I pass or the recent things, because a couple months ago when I killed his best friend and thing, so I don't know if that dad come back or he come or that's something where he do. Because right now, you know, they have no kind of problem. He always told me, Ray, I don't trust because I'm doing nothing, but um, this, this new generation of kids so different. I said, just be careful, you know, be careful. That's all I told him. And back in 2001, Mansato himself said that he was trying to leave the gang life, but the rival gangs wouldn't leave him alone. In January of that year, they murdered his infant son while targeting him, but he said he wasn't planning to retaliate. It's just to take this advantage, you know, because like they say, I had to hold it down and like, I got my life straight and thing, right? I don't know if they don't end the business the way how I step up and do and thing in my life, right? And like, you know, anyway, they see me like they enjoy myself at this corner and I say, what? You enjoy yourself, like, where did the hotel so late? Like, they say, no, I flung away and like, they try to walk, you know? Anyway, they see me, they try to scare me and I try like, do my best for not getting no trouble, you know? Cause I got an all right job, I get good help and thing. And this man, they try like, you know, they really try to turn me wrong, you know, like this hard for me, but you know, I want to make the law do this, you know, and I have no retaliation for retaliation. But 23 years later, the violence of the streets continued to stalk Clay Monsanto. But it never seemed to weigh him down. Monsanto was known for his upbeat personality. I know my brother was a very jovial person. He liked to play around. He liked to dance. He has a sweet mouth. And that's how I remember my brother. And that's how I always, that's how I want to remember him because that's who he was. And he was a very godly man. He read his Psalms every day. You know, 
And that's why I want to remember, it, it's hard for me right now, but I put it in God's hand because only God know best. Only God know best, and that's all I can say. When we saw him this time, I don't know if he came to tell us goodbye, but it was so, it felt so good to, saw, to see him again because we really missed each other for all those years and we, 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 we felt so good being able to talk with each other again, catch up on the past and it really felt good. It hurt me because I love him and I'll never stop loving him because we had a good thing going on, me and him. Going back to the 90s, Mansando was known to be a close personal friend and associate of Jose Matos, who was killed in a similar street-style execution two and a half months ago. Courtney Menzies, 7 News. Mansanto had 10 children in all, two of whom passed away, including the infant that died in his arms back in 2001. And this apparent gang-related murder occurred only a week after the South Side State of Emergency was enacted. But while only certain gangs were targeted, we'll have to wait and see if it will be extended to encompass other gangs in other areas. But while there have been no arrests so far, as you saw, surveillance footage captured the arrival and escape of the shooter and his accomplice. Today, the police said that they've been able to identify a number of possible suspects. We're seeking several suspects in regards to this murder. I know that Mr. Monsanto, he was a, a gang figure back in the day and then he moved to the U.S. and got deported. Was it his past activities that caught up with him? Well, we are following up on several leads and several motives, but we have not narrowed down exactly uh, what uh, was the cause uh, for this murder. Yes, we have dealt with him in the past and the information we have that uh, this person was brought there uh, by another male person on a motorcycle and after the shooting, they bo both fled from the area. And the surveillance footage, has that proven to help narrow down suspects? Okay, we are looking at, at footage uh, along with other information we gathered from interviews and we're following up on those. And on Easter Sunday, a 25-year-old man was shot on Crown Street in the Lake Independence area. According to reports, Christian Molina was in a yard waiting for a friend when that same friend approached him on a bicycle, pointed a gun at him and began firing. ACP Romero said the police are looking for the suspect. Upon the arrival, it's uh, Christian Molina with gunshot injuries. He was taken to the KHMH for treatment where he is now there listed in a stable condition. Christian reported he was uh, at a yard in the area when he was approached by a male person who pulled out a firearm and fired shots towards his direction. He ran off and was uh, shot, but uh, is now stable. Uh, we are seeking one suspect in regards to this shooting. Any motive? Uh, no motive at this time. Uh, he said that he knows the person, so we are looking for this person. And is, does he have like a, uh, has he had confrontations with the person before? Uh, not that they know of. We take a break now. When we come back, I'll have the story on a double drowning near Spanish Lookout. And seven Cubans saved at sea. But what will Belizean authorities do about them? Here is how to be a part of Benny's home patient in three easy steps. First, download the B-Bucks app and sign up to be eligible. It's fast and easy. Then, shop at any Benny's location or Benny's entity. Remember to choose products from our monthly homecation jackpot categories to earn entries. Now you can earn B-Bucks with purchases made and be a part of the Benny's Homecation Jackpot for a chance to win the $10,000 grand prize in December. Win the ultimate homecation with Benny's quality and savings. Upcoming enhancements to my social security. The new healthcare provider feature seamlessly connects healthcare providers, insured persons, and employers to facilitate the payment of sickness benefits. 
Here are the enhancements. Registered healthcare providers will create and submit online medical certificates using their healthcare provider accounts. Insured persons will receive a link to view the medical certificate to complete and submit their sickness benefit claim. And employers will receive an email notification of their employee's sickness claim. Also, the insured person and their employer will receive a copy of the claim decision letter after review. Healthcare providers, insured persons and employers are encouraged to create a portal account to access and benefit from these new services on My Social Security at ssbportal.org.bz. My Social Security Online Portal, new healthcare provider feature coming this March. Social Security at your fingertips. Atala Express is a service that allows you to perform financial transactions conveniently at your neighborhood stores countrywide. Enjoy the convenience of cash withdrawals, bill payments, credit card payments, top up or transfer between your accounts. All you need is your Atlantic Bank Visa debit card along with an ID. Non-Atlantic Bank customers can also enjoy the service by paying with cash. Atla Express is easy, convenient, secure, and near you. In the past three years, Belmopan was the worst failed PUP local government under a failed PUP central government. And in their new term, they are only getting worse. They have now appointed a financial director for Belmopan that is an accused thief. He is Flavio Salam, who, as an accountant for Santander back in August 2018, was charged with embezzlement of $219,000, almost quarter million. This John Brissenio PUP will not change for the better. They will only get worse. I don't care what anybody says. Belizeans, we must stand against them. We must get rid of them. The PUPs have to go. Daddy, daddy. Buy me one coral cut some It's a sound, it's a sound. You want egg? Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Consomme. Aha. Uh -huh. Coral consomme. The best taste and the best price. Less fat, more flavor. Taste the savings. Love the flavor. Available at your favorite supermarkets near you. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. Right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Don't just drive in style, drive in confidence with Real Deal Auto Sales. We pride ourselves not only in ensuring that our vehicles are of top quality, but that they are reliable. Your family safety is paramount to us. Contact us today to check out our fleet to see which one best suits your style and budget. Call us at 613-1889 or visit us at 2736 Hummingbird Highway, Belmopan, right across from the showgrounds. It's no big deal. We're just the real deal auto sales. Tenemos la capacidad técnica, operativa, profesional y la infraestructura de poder establecer una, una atención neurológica de alta calidad. Que no se pierda tiempo de forma innecesaria para poder al final del día llegar al mejor de los resultados y la mejor opción para el paciente. Good evening, I'm Shirley Kalsil, and here's what's ahead for you on 7 News Tonight. 
We've got details of these and other stories in our newscast for tonight. Good evening with your news and the aircraft. Please, you're watching the Nation Station, Channel 7. The long Easter holiday drives Belizeans and visitors from every corner of the country to rivers, lagoons and seas. And sadly, there are inevitably drownings. But on Easter Sunday, there was an unusual one which claimed two lives. Two males, one man, the other a teenager, were having a swimming race under the Iguana Creek Bridge when both of them went under. I went west today to get some answers. Too often the lives of locals and even visitors are claimed by the strong and unpredictable currents in running rivers out in the west. No matter how experienced of a swimmer one may be, no one can determine where the undercurrents lie in these deep bodies of water. The most recent drowning incident took place on Easter Sunday, where 40-year-old Isao Castillo and 15-year-old Eduardo Garcia entered the river near Iguana Creek Bridge for a quick swim, never to be seen alive again. Their co-worker, Elisadro Paz, spoke with us today about what he saw that evening before his friends went under. I was there to uh, uh, do a barbecue with my kids and uh, they trying to uh, swim in the river and I take care of my kids so I didn't know too much about this happening. When I hear that uh, somebody going in the other river then I walking down there but I don't see nothing about when they come down in the river. After that, the men on nights come there and uh, try, uh, I see two of the um, guys there who see where they come down. Uh, they go in, into the river and they, and they take him out. And uh, about, I think about seven minutes after he come down in the river. Mm -hmm. So this happened only a few minutes afterwards? Yeah, I think about seven minutes, uh, Sao Castilla was out, but they can't come out. Isao Castillo was going to have uh, 40 years. The other one, I don't know exactly about how old are. Yeah, they just come on Saturday to visit one of, of the parents. And yeah, we didn't know too much about him. According to Pass, everything happened within a matter of minutes. And he never imagined that he would go from working with Castillo and Garcia to working on their caskets. This river, this is somewhere that you go to swim regularly? Yeah, it's, you know, because it's close here, so we normally go there, uh, yeah. Is it dangerous? Uh, for me, not, because we no go in, you know, behind the, behind the bridge there is, is kind of deep, and I think it has a, like a turn. But yeah, I didn't go there, you know, I was, normally I go there and I just go in the, in the size where, you know, it's, it's shallow, so, yeah. Castillo's family tells us that he leaves behind his wife and three children. As for teenager Eduard Garcia, he is from Melchor. He was in Belize just visiting. Joe Marie Lanza, 7 News. Notably, the Spanish Lookout Fire Department search and rescue team found the bodies fairly quickly using a drone. They were saved by a cruise ship in international waters and brought to Belize. And while that may have seemed like a happy ending for seven Cubans lost at sea, tonight there is uncertainty about what will happen to them next. 7 News has confirmed that the seven Cubans were rescued by the Celebrity Apex cruise ship yesterday on its way to Belize. As we understand it, they were not found in Belizean waters and did not enter Belize illegally. So what to do with them? Well, it seems no one knows. For the time being, they have been deposited at the Immigration Department office in Belize City. According to our sources, but it's caused quite a stir at immigration, which it seems doesn't want to deal with this issue. And reports tell us the department is looking to cast blame for the rescue on the cruise line or the shipping agent, which is Caribbean shipping. Now experts tell us the cruise ship couldn't have just left the Cubans in the sea. They had to rescue them. And now they are in Belize with 
and uncertain future. We'll keep following the story. Tonight, 31 BDF soldiers and 20 Coast Guardsmen and their commanding officer, BDF Major Emil Ko, are in Jamaica being trained for deployment in a multinational force headed to Haiti. They will be undergoing an intensive training at the Jamaica Defence Force training camp. The training will be led by the Canadian military. According to the release, this comprehensive program is designed to equip participants with advanced skills and knowledge necessary for future deployments, particularly in support of efforts in Haiti, facilitated by the Canadian Armed Forces, end quote. The Royal Bahamas Defence Force is also participating. They will all be a part of what is described as a United Nations authorized Kenyan-led multinational security support mission. The CARICOM troops will be trained to bolster the Haitian National Police in their efforts to restore security to the people of Haiti. Sounds simple enough, but it is not. On Thursday, the United Nations called the situation cataclysmic and said that poor governance and increasing levels of gang violence had brought state institutions close to collapse. A security guard reportedly took his own life shortly after his shift began on Sunday night. 35-year-old Orlando Sam arrived at his post-Atlantic bank on Freetown Road at around 9.30. Not long after, a single gunshot was heard and Sam was found dead in a chair inside the bank with a 9mm firearm next to him. Police have ruled the case a death investigation. We take a break now. When we come back, we'll look at the history and the heartbreak of Cross Country 2024. Don't go away. Atla Express es un servicio que te permite realizar transacciones financieras cómodamente en comercios cerca de ti. Con Atla Express puedes retirar efectivo, realizar pagos de facturas y tarjeta de crédito, comprar recargas y transferir entre tus cuentas. Solo necesitas una identificación válida y tu tarjeta de débito Visa de Atlantic Bank. Si no eres cliente de Atlantic Bank, Siempre puedes disfrutar de este servicio pagando en efectivo. Atla Express es fácil, conveniente, seguro y está cerca de ti. Back in January, when Bresenio and the PUP government, under pressure from cane farmers, hurriedly struck an agreement to prevent major public discontent going into the municipal elections, opposition leader Honorable Shine Barrow described it as nothing but a quick fix to a long-term crisis. Merely putting not even a band-aid, I would say a transparent tip that we can all see through on a gaping wound. The opposition leader predicted that once the elections were over, the government would break its promise. I can't feel happy for the Caneros because we'll be back at square one in three months. I guarantee you within three months there will be no inquiry completed. There will be no analysis, no data, no nothing. As predicted, Cain farmers have had to write Bresenio to complain that the commission of inquiry which he promised to establish within 30 days has still not commenced after two months and counting. In a follow-up release, the Cade Farmers wrote, BSCFA calls on the Prime Minister to stay on track and to establish the Commission of Inquiry forthwith. Or shall BSCFA have to remind him where is the track? I will not waste my time in answering the BSCFA. Now that the municipal elections are over, Bresenio does not care what Cade Farmers or Belizeans in general think. I don't care what anybody says.
Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. On Holy Saturday, hope springs eternal. Every Belizean with a patriotic bone in his or her body prays that a local rider will win the historic cross-country. Oscar Quiroz did it last year, but there would be no Belizean hero this year. We were back to heartbreak, but also history with a new record and the first Honduran to wear the garland. With the help of Andrew Ordonas's live commentary, Jules Vasquez has this report. Former champions Justin Williams, Oscar Quiroz, and Bill Elliston lined up at the front of the race to lead the 117 riders, 16 of them foreign, on the 144-mile journey. And from early on, one name would stand out. And immediately, Luis Lopez, immediately, Luis Lopez and the attack. Luis Lopez and the attack. Luis Lopez blown by, by these guys. Luis Lopez, mile 35. Luis Lopez all alone. It's Luis Lopez all alone as he drives you up in a zero step already. Number 79, Luis Lopez. The Honduran's name echoed through Belize all of Saturday morning from mile 36 on the way to Cayo. It was one of those early kamikaze attacks that seemed designed to capture station prizes, not the garland. And Lopez was caught by the time he reached Belmopan. Lopez was among the dozen or so foreign riders who drove an exciting race of many breakaways, regroupings and attacks. Lopez was back in the lead group by mile 30 on the return when Carlton Robinson and Jocelyn Chavaria Jr. pulled into that lead group at mile 12. They were Belize's only hope with a few miles to go. Jocelyn Jr. shared a coke with Lopez, while Guatemalan Alex Hulahu pushed Carlton Robinson onto the pace. Coming down to the last few miles, it would be Abner Maxwell, Carlton Robinson, and Hulahu in the lead. The foreign riders staged numerous attacks with Carlton Robinson responding time and time again. They had him almost like a yo-yo. There's an attack again by Luis, Luis Lopez, Luis Lopez, Luis Lopez, and again, Carlton Robinson, Carlton Robinson, again, Carlton Robinson answering the car, Carlton Robinson answering the car, look again, the dead people are raised out of their grave again. And entering the city, there was one Belizean and three foreign riders. Here goes Luis Lopez as he makes his way around the, around the boat, a separation, here goes Carlton Robinson, Carlton Robinson, the whole nation, the whole nation is cheering for... After a heroic ride, Robinson could not keep up with the onslaught of attacks and fell back. And coming around the flag monument, three foreign riders, an American, a Guatemalan and a Honduran were on the cusp of history. All Belizean fans could hope for was that it would not be the Guatemalan. And by the time the group came around the corner at SJC, it was clear they could not keep up and the Honduran would coast the victory, a first for any Honduran rider in the 94 years of the race. This guy is a madman, he's a powerhouse and he's riding towards victory, Luis Lopez. He was out early this morning, stayed out, and you know, he joined very well of the, um, the, the breaks. The fans are looking to see if it's a Belizean, but it's not a Belizean. It's Luis Lopez as we head towards the finishing line. And he crossed the line all alone, beating the record that had stood for 16 years. Alex Hulahu finished second for the second time, and Abner Maxwell finished third. At Fort Carlton Robinson was the first Belizean to finish. It's a day. A really, really, really hard race. Um, I was outnumbered. Um, I really, really try to uh, keep it together now. Um, I know if they may bring it a little bit closer after I'm winning our sprint. I know if it may call a little bit closer after I'm winning our sprint, but I guess the guys may figure out that I very fast, so they started attack, 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 and I couldn't, couldn't go no more. 
despite the position you came in, how does it feel for you today to be the first Belizean to cross the finish line at the 94th uh, Cross Country Cycling Classic? Um, it feels amazing, um, but I really wanted to win. But I have to be happy with this results now. Um, for uh, well, no, la estrategia era... The strategy was to give it all I had. Don't hold back anything. I know that I was riding unaccompanied. And I also know that there were so many riders, but I know that if it shaped up into a tough race, possibly at the end there would be a small window, a small difference, and a good final would be the result. Contento de, de ser I am content to be second place in a very tough race of hundreds of kilometers. It was a good day out. I mean, it was. I was on a break from the gun with a lot of strong riders, and the team worked really well together. It was definitely hot towards the end. About nine o'clock, it started turning on, and honestly, I can't complain. The team did really well today. They gave me water, they gave me ice, and they kept me well fueled, and we got to the end. I made the last break, and luckily it's the one that went to the line. It was amazing. Everyone's strong, everyone's polite. There was definitely some weird racing tactics, some stuff that's different from the U.S., but I can't complain. It was amazing. The new record of five hours, 39 minutes, and 25 seconds bested the 2008 record by 47 seconds. Election petitions are used to challenge an election result. There's never been a successful one taken before the courts, and we have never seen one used in a municipal election. But the UDP has filed one to the challenge the result of the Punta Gorda mayoral election, where their candidate, Franklin Cranca Polonio, lost by 25 votes to Carlos Obia Galvez. This was established after two recounts with Polonio leading during the first count. The UDP petition alleges that there was, quote, fraudulent destruction of what would have been considered valid ballots, which would have made Polonio as the rightful elected mayoral candidate. We'll let you know where this one goes, but based on history going back over many decades, the prospects of success for an election petition are not good. In the long list of abuses that bus commuters suffer with regularity, it would seem that one more wouldn't be that big of a deal. But when it involves the only restroom at the biggest terminal in the country, it's a problem. Multiple reports to 7 News this weekend noted that the very shabby restroom facilities at the terminal went out of service on Thursday and remained that way all weekend. Reports tell us it was still out of service today. You can call him Belize's most accessible and outspoken doctor. He has never shielded from any interview or talk show. But tonight, internist Dr. Fernando Cuellar is in a fight for his own life. After surviving a bout of COVID that left him hospitalized and ramped up his diabetes, which forced him to amputate a toe, Dr. Cuellar has now been diagnosed with cancer of the blood. This was announced in a post from his sister, it's shocking news that is surely devastating to the patients he has faithfully cared for and the wider community which has always benefited from his public health mindedness. According to, our according to a message from his family, Dr. Cuellar was seeking medical attention for a back fracture when the cancer was discovered. He is currently in the U.S. receiving treatment at this time. They're asking for support in the form of prayers, but also for their privacy. They say Dr. Cuellar longs to return to the country and patients he loves. And finally tonight, we note the passing of senior diplomat and long-term permanent secretary and CEO of Foreign Affairs, David Gibson. Gibson died at home in Belmopan over the weekend. He was 70 years old and the father of five. Gibson was considered an authority on, on Belize's foreign affairs. 
And that's all we have for you on 7 News tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Jo Marie Lanza. You can find a full transcript of the news at 7news.belize.com and see the streaming video on our Facebook or YouTube pages. Have a good night and join us back here tomorrow at the same time.